In the CCNA security class, part of the curriculum focuses on attacks and security that needs to be implemented from inside the network. So if we look at this network right here that we have, we've got the exterior, the outside, right? And we have a perimeter router here, and then here's the cloud, the internet. So this is exterior. So there are attacks that come from outside of your network um, coming into the network. But we also have to worry about attacks, network attacks from inside the network, from the interior of the network, right? So in this case, we've got perimeter router, and then we have a firewall router, and then we have three switches on the inside of the network, and then we have hosts attached to these switches, and we have separate VLANs. So we have to worry about attacks not only from the outside, but from the inside. Now, how does this happen? Well, maybe this company has a disgruntled employee, or maybe by accident um, a, a worker uh, ends up bringing in their own computer from home and putting it on the network, and it has a virus, and it attacks the network. Or maybe Maybe they establish remote communications from inside the network, which opens up a hole into the network created from the inside out, so to speak. Um, maybe uh, the attacker is inside the network and in tries to introduce a network device. Maybe tries to add a, a switch to the network or a wireless access point to the network or something like that. So a lot of attacks that, um, that are the hardest to defend against actually come from inside of the network. So in this tutorial I'm going to talk about layer 2 uh, local area network LAN security practices that you can implement inside your network and we're going to focus on security measures that you can put on a layer 2 device meaning a switch. So we'll put some configurations on this switch right here which will help improve security and help to mitigate certain types of attacks that could happen inside the network. So I've got this other document here I want to show you um, so we've got this document that talks a little bit about this. So when we're talking about switches, right, and the types of attacks, we've got, first of all, on the top here, access attacks to the switch. So what we're talking about is switch access control security, right? And what does that mean? Well, it means authentication, which is the user accounts and passwords. Right? In instead of having one user, uh, one admin user for the entire switch or the entire router, right? it's best to have individualized user accounts and passwords. Authorization levels. Um, what are their privileges? Right? Who's got privilege level 15 for um, enable privileges to get to the configuration modes on the switch? Right? Um, is there logging enabled? So this is AAA security right here. Physical security. How is the switch, um, how is access to the switch physically controlled? Is it in a locked room? Can anyone have access to the console port? Um, remote access security. Have you correctly configured your VTY ports, your auxiliary port? Are you using Telnet or SSH? You know SSH is secure, Telnet's not. Uh, what kind of encryption are you putting on your passwords? You know, MD5, Type 7, what type of encryption are you using? And then are you employing a policy of password strength on your passwords, right? So on this level we're talking about access attacks, management control over the switch, right? You want to make sure that nobody can gain management control over your switch. Now in this tutorial I'm going to spend more time talking about this second area down here which is LAN attacks, local area network attacks at layer 2 and we're talking about attacks that attack um, the VLANs and layer 2 protocols, right? So we're talking Cisco Discovery Protocol, um, DTP, STP, Spanning Tree Protocol, um, and VLANs, right? And let's go down the list here. So VLAN hopping. Um, an attacker could try to get access to a switch and then jump from the VLAN that it, the switch has been configured for to other VLANs and then if you can jump from VLAN to VLAN you can basically attack other other networks right um, other broadcast domains or other VLANs on site of the interior network so you want to make sure that you don't let attackers hop from VLAN to VLAN right and enable them to basically jump from network to network so to help defend against VLAN hopping we're going to need to disable uh, DTP, Dynamic Trunking Protocol. DTP allows ports to auto-negotiate from um, an auto mode into a trunk. And if attacker knows that DTP is enabled, then they can uh, connect to that port and 
basically send uh, trunking protocol information on that port and the port on the other side will automatically switch to a trunk and now they have a trunk and access to all VLANs quite possibly so VLAN hopping is um, uh, one way to mitigate that is to make sure that DTP is not enabled but on a lot of Cisco switches it's enabled by default so we're going to need to disable that another thing we're going to need to do is to um, basically not use the default VLAN by default all Cisco switches start up in kind of an auto mode with um, as members of VLAN 1 and as members of VLAN 1 um, also the management VLAN is in VLAN 1 and the native VLAN is in VLAN 1 and so a switch that has not been secured or properly configured um, anyone basically connecting into that switch can try to access the management area of the switch by going across VLAN 1 because that happens to also be the management VLAN so we're gonna need to move um, VLAN 1 we can't disable VLAN 1 but what we can do is we can um, configure the switch ports to not be members of VLAN 1 okay and then the next thing is native VLAN 1 now native VLAN 1 is used for backwards compatibility and another VLAN hopping technique that um, has uh, is possible is double tagging VLAN hopping and what that is is when a packet goes across a native VLAN trunk the um, VLAN ID is stripped from the packet so there's no VLAN ID well if you have two VLAN IDs in your packet essentially right when it goes across the native VLAN maybe the first um, packet the first tag will be stripped but the second tag will remain and now when your um, packet ends up on the other side of that trunk it's got this um, second VLAN ID and so you could actually hop VLANs by double tagging a VLAN ID into your packet. Now another one that we're going to have to work with is STP. STP is enabled by default on switches and it's necessary when you have multiple switches in a network and you have the possibility of switching loops and um, an attacker could manipulate packets and basically control STP and manipulate STP so that they could become the root bridge or the the switch that all spanning trees are designed from so a lot of traffic would then come to the attacker and the attacker could capture those packets and get valuable information on how to attack the network um, so, so STP is enabled by default but what we want to do is we want to secure STP by not allowing um, attacks and STP manipulations. Um, another thing is CDP. CDP is enabled by default on um, Cisco switches. It's a layer 2 protocol that gives a lot of information about neighboring Cisco devices. So it can be used for reconnaissance to find out about other switches or routers or Cisco devices on the network and so typically you want to disable CDP by default. And then last but not least here, we've got switch port security. So these are some protocols that we want to deal with, some VLANs we want to deal with. But down here also, we want to set up some switch port security. So to help defend against uh, broadcast storms, what we could do is we could add some storm control measures um, on our ports. Uh, a LAN broadcast storm is broadcast packets on the LAN that will dis broadcast out of let's say all switch ports and they could cause a denial of service attack essentially also we want to make sure that we defend against MAC address spoofing someone imitating MAC addresses of other devices on the network and by having port security what we can do is we could um, secure each port on the switch so that only one MAC address is allowed another thing is a MAC address table overflow attack if we allow uh, the switch to be bombarded with MAC addresses or with bombarded with packets that show uh, different source MAC addresses then those MAC addresses the switch will try to to basically save in its table and if the table gets too much information we have an overflow scenario and then the switch will resort to broadcasting out of all ports basically turning the switch into a hub and allowing an attacker to see all packets um, 
disseminated on the network. So we want to defend against um, abusing the ports and allowing only, we want to allow only maybe one MAC address per port and not allow de new devices onto the switch. And we can do that with switch port security, uh, port security. So its port security is disabled by default on the switch, so we want to enable it. Storm control is disabled by default uh, on the switch, and what we want to do is we want to um, enable it, configure it, right? And and some of these other protocols we want to, they are enabled by default, we want to disable them. 